For the first time in five years, we have the cheapest, most affordable spec to report on ever. And not to be outdone, we also have, in my humble opinion, the ugliest comic cover <laughs> I have ever seen True. leading off the list, guys. Let's get into it. Another week, another list, the most trending comics in the comic book marketplace. Hit the like and subscribe. As many as half of our viewers don't sub to the channel. What's up with that? And thank you for holding down the fort last week with Fire Guy Ryan. You were absolutely missed, Tom, but the comic fam knows we are not going to miss a week. We have been doing this every single week for five and a half years, folks. Well, this first comic book on the list at number 10 is clearly a full nostalgia spec play. Remember those popsicles back in the day, you know, like you hunt down that ice cream man. It's got the gumballs on the eyes and it never looks right. Well, we have Sonic the Hedgehog, Endless Summer, number one, the one in 25 variant hitting $50 average sales. And look at this cover. It's atrocious. With high sales nearing $80, this is definitely being driven by the video game market. And no disrespect at all to artist Natalie Haynes, who is an awesome artist. This is just stylistically really weird, melty popsicle cover. And we know the people want it because it's selling really well this week. Comic book in the casa you know he misses me after a convention shout out to all the members i met in canada fan expo had a blast butch clearly missed me but yeah the cover is supposed to look weird because that's what the popsicles look like so kudos to the artist they did their job but i also want to throw out a word of caution sonic the hedgehog variants sometimes spike pretty aggressively because no one orders them at their shop this is very true Remember when we had Sonic the Hedgehog number 50, the 1 in 25 Tyson Hesse variant? That actually showed up on the trending list and was selling for more than double ratio. That book has cooled down to the $30 range, and again, it's really just the video game guys that seem to be pushing this market. If you want to get a copy of this cover, be a little bit patient, and you might see it after the market comes down. I mean, you have an LCS. How many copies of Sonic the Hedgehog Endless Summer did you order? I didn't buy any copies of this book. It's not the ongoing Sonic, and most of my Sonic guys who care about the story don't care about the one-shots. You got to keep an eye out on incentive variants. Clearly, there is some value in these, but I think the play is to be a little patient before you invest and go all in. If you are not signed up for the Mystery Mail Call, you are missing out. There is a one-per-box Johnny Desjardins Virgin variant of the boys number one going out in every single box this month first appearance of the boys going in one per box yo i'm super excited this is a glorious homelander cover you're gonna love it in person and that's not all plot holes number one sean gordon murphy anyone we have limited trade dress as well as virgin sketch variants going out one per box at random comictom101.com to join I'll send you some comics every single month. You're going to love it. Sometimes the book's on the list just because it's a hot-looking cover. Number nine in the list, Wolverine number 27. This is an iconic Jim Lee cover art, and you've probably seen it before. We are seeing $25 average sales and $180 for CGC 9.8. It's a 100% increase in copies sold this week, mainly based on the fact that Jim Lee is doing a CGC signing. People are picking up copies. Seeing a $25 sale on an average cover that's trending up because of a CGC signing clearly makes sense. People want to get a signed book by one of the best living comic artists of all time. However, I will say, 20 to $25 budget to get a signature that you're paying eBay and you're paying shipping, etc. Save the time. If you're going to spend that kind of money... Go to an LCS. Go shopping and support your local comic shop and see what they have on the wall. You may be able to get a better deal than what's happening on eBay. Also, you may find something else that you may like. Maybe something you can pre-order for super cheap. That's awesome. And if you are a Jim Lee DC fan, be on the lookout on Batman Day, September 16th. They're going to be releasing a foil cover of Batman 608 with another one of his amazingly iconic covers. Get that foil signed at CGC and it's going to look fantastic. Fantastic in your collection. And number eight on the list is X Factor number one. We got the old team teaming up in a modern comic book run. Seeing $10 average sales, 9.8 last week went for like 63 bucks. However, some members aren't very patient. This is a book that you need to get on auction. Because if you're going to go to try to buy it now, you're paying 100 to 130 on a book that hit heights of $300 in 2021. 
it's a 100% increase in copies sold this week, and there have been Deadpool 3 rumors about the old school X-Men team showing up, and while not a lot of people are going to go out and buy X-Men number one, getting X-Factor number one that features the entire old school team, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Beast, Iceman, and Angel, this is a low buy-in for potential high reward. Deadpool 3 spec? Yeah. Will the book go up massively if we see a reprisal? Maybe, probably not. This seems like a $100 9.8 book at best, but I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. While we talk about number seven on the list, Star Wars, Clone Wars, issue number one, first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. $700 average raw sale, and we are seeing a recent CGC 9.8 at $1,530, which is massively down from its all-time record high of $3,990 in June of 2021. We know that the last three plus years of speculation about Ahsoka showing up has absolutely fueled this. The show's finally here and the books are dropping off. 143% increase in copies sold. The two episodes dropped last week. We got episode three this week. No spoilers. Haven't seen it yet. Going to watch it tomorrow. But this comic book during the comic boom was in such high demand at a time that CGC was pumping grades out so slow that they had to actually hire more people to keep up with the delays that were at times exceeding five months. Well, since we chatted about this book last four months ago, there's been four new 9.8s added to the census. We'd be lucky to see one 9.8, one or every two months back then. Now we're seeing one, one at least a month, let alone between grades 9.0 and 9.8, in which there were 30 total added to the census in under four months. Now, this is one of those books that had a low print run at Dark Horse. Just over 24,000 copies were made and sold to retailers. So when I tell you that over 1,600 copies have been graded, that's almost 7% of the print run are slabbed right now. People are even slabbing as low as a 3.0 on the census. They're just trying to make money. So be patient. This might go down even farther. At the list at number six, we have Secret Wars number one, Jonathan Hickman goodness, and I expected to see this comic make the list very soon after we chatted about Avengers 35 two weeks ago. That was the first issue of the Time Runs Out storyline, and the spec is pointing to that being part of the Doctor Strange 3 to connect to Kang Dynasty. People are speculating that Doctor Strange 3 is going to incorporate the Time Runs Out story arc, which, again, started in Avengers number 35, and this is the final story arc before Hickman's run on Avengers and New Avengers and this Secret War miniseries started. Makes sense. We've got Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars down the pipeline, and this book, which hit heights of $300, selling for $5 average sales and a 9.8 hitting, wait for it. It costs about, what, 25 bucks to get a comic graded? Oh, yeah. After it's all said and done? $24. That's absolutely incredible. So someone got a deal on that one, but really there are a ton of these copies out there. It was a major summer event. I remember buying a bunch of these back when they first came out, and they did not all sell off the wall. So I'm sure there are raw copies out there at your LCS. Jonathan Hickman's bringing back the Ultimate Universe in. Ultimate Universe number one in November. And it's not even being described as a miniseries. So I think this is going to be more ongoing to the rejoice of many fans because we all love the ultimate runs. And in fact, I would actually go as far to say as a tip, if you're ever trying to get somebody into superhero comic books, let's say Spider-Man, for example, don't get them Ditko Spider-Man. You got to get them reading Brian Michael Bendis ultimate, you know, like that run is very welcoming to new readers. It's not kind of cartoony, it's way more mature, and one that is a surefire way to give the best opportunity to intro someone into superhero comics that may not otherwise read them. San Diego Comic-Con last year, 2022, we got information that Phase 6 will conclude with Secret Wars in the MCU. This book will probably not go any lower than it is right now. Speaking of low sales, how about the lowest sale recorded all year for a 9.8 major Bronze Age Spidey key? That is loved we have at the list at number five the death of gwen stacy asm 121 now this is a perpetually relevant book and definitely not one you would want to recommend to someone as a jumping on it's a little point. bit of a downer it really really <laughs> is but the death of gwen stacy is a canon event this is one of those that completely and totally defines where peter parker is going after this 900 average sales 1826 dollars for a cgc 9.8 is a steal the record all-time high is 9,300 
$300 in June 2021. I will admit that that number sounds a little bit inflated, but man, that much of a drop-off is absolutely jaw-dropping. To prove your point, Russ, in the comment section below, is this a key book that you want to own? Because there's a lot of books we talk about that I understand. If you're not a Star Wars fan, yeah, Ahsoka Tana may not float your boat. But this is a book that is beloved by everyone, even if you're like not a diehard Spidey fan, and seeing that it's its year-long low... What's going on? We've already seen this on the screen play out. Well, we do have Spider-Gwen spec. We do know that they're going to be sourcing probably multiverse versions of Spider-Gwen in the movie that is TBD. Who knows when they're actually going to finish this movie? And we also have Emma Stone spec. She got a haircut. Looks a lot like Spider-Gwen. Maybe she's going to make an appearance. But that's not why you buy an expensive book like this. This is just a good deal. This is a beloved comic and one that... Geez, I'm starting to feel the FOMO bug. It's a 317% increase in copies sold, which is a lot for a book of this age. There are only 81 9.8s on the census, and they've added 198, 196, and 194 in the last two weeks. Really, it's a buyer's market right now. And if someone wants to go in and make an offer on a high dollar book, there's a lot of sellers that I know are just hurting from the lack of sales in a lot of the other areas. You might get a deal. An opportunity to buy one new 9.8 when back in 2021, there were books of this caliber that we wouldn't see hit the market for upwards of six months. Mm -hmm. Well, now if you can wait one month, that's a very different environment, which is causing books to have a major adjustment. This has never happened before. True. We are reporting a $0 average sale when accounting for fees and shipping. This is crazy, guys. Number four on the list, free comic book day, Avenger slash X-Men number one. Yes, $0 average sale on a book that's up 400% week over week and has broken the halfway mark on our trending 10. What the hell, Russ? Jonathan Hickman does seem to be running the Marvel Universe right now, at least the comic book side of it, because this book is spiking because we know there is a tie-in from his new Gods series. They gave a very, very complicated synopsis for Gods that I don't even know what way they're pointing, but truthfully, this is an event that will probably not be forgotten anytime soon because I feel... Hickman is planning on having a massive, massive change in what we know and love for the Marvel Universe. The cosmic universe is going to be shaken up like we've never seen. And I agree with you. When you read the synopsis, if you don't know all the references, you're just going to go, what the hell is going on? Also, they did some interesting marketing as it pertains to this comic book that's going to be coming out courtesy of Jonathan Hickman on October 4th, which is putting a page of the comic book in multiple ongoing comics just to solicit. But if you read that one page in a random comic, you don't know what's going on. It's cool art, but it's just to give you a little bit of that flavor that Jonathan Hickman loved, which people are clearly specking on. I mean, let's look at a couple numbers back on the list. That's all it took to take this free comic book day book to spike up in the community because there's a first appearance in it that's going to be the focus of this new God's run. I don't generally use the word self-aggrandizing, but truthfully, this statement makes no sense at all whatsoever. And really, we do love Jonathan Hickman, but listen to this. Jonathan Hickman reinvents the cosmology of the Marvel Universe. What happens when the powers that be meet the natural order of things? The infinite detente between the natural order of things and the powers that be nears an end. Old acquaintances are reunited during a Babylon event. The Lion of Wolves throws the worst parties. Don't look under the table. There's a John Wilkes Booth penny on the ground. This enormous size first issue features Doctor Strange, who, while not boring at all, is easily the most boring person in the book. Obviously, they're messing with you. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, we haven't had a good cosmic shakeup in a while. I know Hickman's tried before, but really, since Starlin did a whole bunch of work, it's been pretty much the same. This is confusing. We know that all of the Marvel issues this last month have had a little bit of a preview of the gods. None of these pages make any sense out of context, and I can't piece anything together, and they are definitely not going to let us know anything before issue number one. It's the first appearance of Wynn who's going to be the focus in this new run, and this is their first appearance, and this is a low buy-in. Don't pay more than five bucks on this book. Another great Star Wars book we have been talking about for multiple years 
finally coming to fruition on the screen in the Ahsoka television show. Number three on the list, Star Wars, Kanan the Last Padawan, number six. We are seeing $135 average raw sales and $320 for a high CGC 9.8. This is the first full appearance of Sabine Wren, Harrison Jula, and Ezra Bridger. I know we got to see cameos in issue one and issue five, but this is the pinnacle issue that people really want to collect. I bought this book for around 500 to 700 dollars when i specced on it and i say that because it made sense at the time we were waiting on star wars anything to take place in one of the numerous shows since we knew that ahsoka tana was going to lead their own show incorporate all the characters that are featured in this book i mean even Dr. Afra. I mean, that spec has been circulating for three years now, and we even got Black Chrysanthemum. Like, we're in the same timeline that this could all just take place. It all seems like really good spec, but you got to look at not just the adjustment of the marketplace right now, but the CGC counts of this book. It is astronomical. It's 150% increase in copies sold, and this is not just people who are fans of Rebels. It is absolutely the market being driven by the new Ahsoka fans. But so many new copies, 134 new copies since April 24th on the CGC census, and 2,149 copies graded total all the way to 9.8. That is a lot of copies out there. Not only was there over 130 copies added to the CGC census, nearly 100% of those copies graded between 9.0 and 9.8. And of the 9.8s, there are 46 brand new copies that are likely hitting the internet. If you can only get 10 opportunities in a given month, it makes sense why this book would stay strong. But if you can get upwards of 20 copies in a given month, that's a lot of opportunities for that book to adjust further than what the comic market is causing. And this definitely goes back to the CGC point. While they do have more graders and they are pushing books out more often, it is very clear that two or three years ago, we had copies that got graded by collectors that made their way onto the market. Now, the copies making them way out are absolutely people who invested and are attempting to make money on this. That's why the market feels flooded, and I believe that's why people are accepting lower offers than ever before. Number two on the list is Wonder Woman 800, an anniversary issue featuring Trinity, the daughter of Wonder Woman, co-written by Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad since 2021, post the death of Wonder Woman in Dark Knight's death metal. Well... She would spend some time in Valhalla and have a run written by these authors. And then that would conclude with issue 800, which was filled with a lot of different stories from multiple writers, including one in particular, Tom King, who is going to be taking on Wonder Woman very soon. Now, Tom King has been doing some fantastic mini and maxi series, but this is going to be the first ongoing series he's working on since he left Batman. Damn, you're right. After the wedding. Yes, absolutely. It's a crazy wow. thing. I'm excited for it. And this is really going to delve more into what happens with Wonder Woman when she's not allowed to be an Amazon on American soil. This is going to be very interesting. This is a low buy and it's essentially selling for cover price. We're going to find out if it's worth it very soon. September 19th is when the run debuts and I'll go on record and say I do not care if people didn't care for his run on Batman I freaking loved it and you got to add Wonder Woman to your pull list hit the like slap the subscribe button at the list at number one doomsday it's happened Russ the thing that we have hypothesized could happen because we've seen it in the past and it just happened with a McFarlane key that was labeled as a potential ghost comic book at the list at number one spawn 306. People throwing around the word ghost can be very, very dangerous, but you know what? Tom warned you. You know you did. Over a year ago, you were letting the comic fam know. We're talking about the Nether Realms variant, the Mortal Kombat tournament that would end up changing course and not being welcomed to the entire community because of pandemic. And this what was going to be a giveaway at the show ended up only being given to the players who attended and performed, which would mean that upwards of 50, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less actually made their way out, creating what could have been one of the lowest print run spawn comic books ever. This would be considered a ghost if that was the case. But shout out Key Collector because early on, two years ago, they sent out a cautionary warning because this right here was the recipe of either a major key collectible valid being worth what it was hitting 
or not. Over on the Key Collector app, there is a buyer beware category, and this is definitely one of those books that has been on that category for the last couple of years. Even though the McFarland camp had been told that these extra copies had been destroyed, they didn't have any visual proof of it. And Tom and Fire Guy Ryan were on the mic last year speculating that if there happened to be a box somewhere, we could see the bottom fall out of the market. So how are individuals getting this and who has them? Because you have to assume if none of them were given away, they're all together. Right. They could all be in one box. Does one person have these? Well, in the last week or so, we have been seeing this happen absolutely in real time. A book that at one point in time was a $5,000.98 is now going for just a little over $1,000 and $400 average sales for a raw. It's a massive spike in copies sold mainly because of the absolute availability at this point in time. We have seen this with other books in the past. Tom and I have gone on the mic and talked about other times that we saw a sealed dealer case of Spider-Woman number one. There are things that we've seen that we know are going to move the needle on the market drastically. Unfortunately, this is just the latest example. There was a buyer who acquired over 60 copies of this book. And let's just say it how it is. They did the only thing they could do to sell this comic accurately. They pulled out their phone and they showcased it. And they even said they only bought a sixth of the run. That makes it sound like none of the books were likely destroyed. Even though there's probably a pretty low print run on the book, it definitely wouldn't be considered a ghost. That buyer then did the only thing that they could do ethically. They put it all on eBay all at once. Within 24 hours, this book tanked because over 70 copies, including upwards of 10 CGC 9.8s, sold. In theory, if whoever might have the stash were to release the entire stash all at once online, the price would drop because there's a bunch of them. Yeah, everyone has it, right? So you're saying if they trickle them out one by one or some small number to kind of make sure the scarcity makes the price high is what you're saying, like some kind of manipulation? Exactly. So going from 50 or so known copies to over 120 or so known copies out of a print run that would have been just about 500 copies makes this much more affordable, much more accessible. I know Spawn collectors are actually rejoicing right now because this has been one of those very tough books that they didn't think they'd ever be able to put into their collection. Because of the market volatility, they are picking them up at much lower prices than they ever expected. The best way to inform the community members is to get this kind of information out there. And what I would love to see, and I'll kind of throw out a call to action because I wish I did it in my last video a year ago. We can't be the only ones to talk about these types of warnings. I want to see more members who are making comic-themed content cover these types of things. Because we can talk all day about spec and the potential pitfalls that that may be. But when there is a valid concern that there could be market manipulation, we need to hear those words on the mic in mass. We can share our videos, but this type of commentary is some of the most important to be had on the internet. Help us help the comic fam, and as always, geek responsibly. Enough said.